Yaga Africa, a civil society organization, has alerted security agencies of 13 flashpoints in local government areas where possible violence needs to be checked in the September 19th governorship elections in Edo. One of its board members is in Wangwagu at the group's first pre-election observation report on the Edo elections stated this. Wagu said that Yaga Africa has deployed 24 long-term observers in 18 local government areas of Edo to systematically observe and gather information on the pre-election environment as well as early warning signs of electoral violence. He said that the observers reported incidences of violent, verbal and physical attacks, identity-based violence, fake news mongering and hate speech rhetoric employed as campaign strategies by parties. He said that the observers also reported the repositioning of court groups as political merchants for the election in some local government areas as well as gender-based violence. And joining us now to throw more light on this alert is the executive director of Yaga Africa, Samson Utodo, uh, who joins us now virtually. Thanks for joining us, Ms. Utodo. Very good morning to you. Uh, could you kindly give us more details on this flashpoints in Edo State? Well, thank you very much. Um, yesterday, we released a report on um, the pre-election environment in Edo State. And one of the findings based on the um, reports that we got from our um, long-term observers who have been deployed um, across the 18 local governments is the fact that the spate of pre-election violence is increasing. And what we have seen um, is um, political parties, particularly the major political parties, have actually employed um, violent um, hate speech, vandalism, and violence as a campaign strategy. And out of the 18 local governments, 13 of them are flashpoints of violence because these local governments have high cases of physical violence, vandalism, as well as the destruction of properties or campaign materials belonging to candidates. It's in these local governments we've also seen candidates inciting um, um, the public and their supporters um, to attack um, um, or either opposi their, their opposition um, supporters. And we are very, very concerned that also in these local governments, we've seen a, a surge in activities of gangsters and thugs. And this, for us, is attributed, you know, to an entrenched culture, subculture of violence that is built around strong men and thugs and gangsters. Um, and it is believed that a cannot be won without strong arm tactics and the support of powerful thugs. And it's very, very disturbing because we've seen, you know, in these states and the security engage arrest and prosecute these, um, these talks and their sponsors. And because if there's low turnout of voters in the um, September 19th elections, it is largely due to the fear uh, and the threat of, of, um, of violence. So these 13 local governments are flashpoints and we expect that the police and the security agencies will deploy um, um, security uh -huh. officials to act, nip this in the bud. We have less than three weeks to go. The security agencies need to assure the voters. And we conducted a survey and serve with NOI polls, and 71% of registered voters in um, Edo State want to cast their vote. Therefore, the state needs to ensure that the, 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 the polling units are safe, so people can exercise their franchise on September 19th. And uh, still on your preliminary report, you identified a new kind of electoral violence, and that's uh, recruiting courtists and uh, gender-based violators. Please explain uh, this more to us. Can you hear me? Hello? 
Can you hear me? Yes. I, I was asking about your preliminary report. You identified a new kind of, of violence. You talked about the recruitment of courtists and gender-based violators. So could you explain uh, that just a bit more? Yeah, so what we have seen is in local governments that you call battleground local governments, um, for instance, Ipobaoka, Oredo, Orionwa, these are local governments that have high number of registered voters. These are local governments that have high number of PVC collection rates. So you expect that majority of the votes are going to come from those places because Oredo and Ipobaoka have 14% of the total number of registered voters. So it, those local governments are very uh, battleground local governments. And what you have seen is in those local governments, there has been recruitment of thugs and, and you know, a surge in um, activities of, um, of cult groups, uh, which is very disturbing. We've also seen supporters um, um, of candidates being attacked. We've also seen that in almost um, every local government, there is actually a recorded case of sexual and, and gender-based mm -hmm. violence. And this is really unacceptable um, because when these reports are released, we expect that the security agencies will take this report and provide response. Um, because if you allow the cultists actually go on rampage on election day, they're going to destroy and undermine the integrity of the elections, which will raise questions um, on its outcome. This has broad implications because if people are not confident um, that the, the process has been fair, then don't expect them to accept electoral outcomes. But our call also to the political stakeholders is in the event you dispute the outcome of any election, violence is not an instrument for um, resolving electoral disputes. The courts are there so you take to the courts and take the civil means of electoral dispute um, resolution and not violence um, because violence destroys a nation. Violence undermines political legitimacy. So it is very important that the political stakeholders, mm -hmm. you know, call, um, call these politicians to order. And that's why we also noted and commended the OBA. Um, for the peace efforts um, he is undertaking. We need to see more of that, but we also need to hold, you know, the politicians and their supporters um, accountable in the event there is any sort of political instability as a result of an election. Hmm. Let's now I'll touch a bit on this. What's the connection of fake news, rumor mongering and violence? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of connection because what you've also seen is um, in the pre-election period, there have been allegations and counter-allegations. And most of them are just fake news that are employed by the politicians to, one, delegitimize the elections and the process. And so what they already, they are playing a game such that that gives them a justification not to accept electoral outcomes, even if the process is transparent and is free and is fair. So they, they're trying to delegitimize the process. So you see allegations about um, um, the um, either a, the resident electoral commissioner or um, the commissioner, the, uh, the REC, um, the, this whole debacle with um, Mike Igini. Um, you also see the allegation about printing of, of PVCs. You also see um, allegations around, uh, you know, printing of ballot ballot papers um, so ballot boxes can be stuffed um, on the day of elections. Whilst we cannot wish away some of these allegations, but we know a lot of them are pretty much fake news and they're just appropriating it one either to as a campaign strategy um, to delegitimize the process, to... Um, to incite the public, um, to also um, cause division within um, ranks of um, um, opponents. Uh, and that is very, very misleading. Uh, and that is why we urge the political actors, because fake news can actually drive violence, um, especially on election day, um, if INEC has not declared results, and then um, politicians decide to declare their own results, 
it can create tension. There is already tension in the state. And what political actors should be invested in is de-escalating this tension. So you don't plunge the state into crisis. Because at the end of the day, you need a peaceful environment to govern. You need a peaceful environment to conduct elections. And so the, the security agencies have a fundamental role to play that where um, politicians employ these tactics, you know, for these elections, they should move against them because the voters, the voters in Edo have a constitutional right to exercise their franchise. And the state, and I need to underscore this, that the Nigerian state owes them that responsibility to protect and ensure that they vote and exercise their constitutional right in a secure environment. Anything short of that will be unacceptable. And uh, you just uh, talked a bit about the Arbor of Bini commending him uh, for the peace building initiative. So as an, ob as an observer, do you think uh, the, the action of the Arbor of Bini witnessed two days ago will abate possible violence? No, at least for the first time, we're seeing the two candidates, you know, actually um, in the same room and hugging each other. The main political actors are actually are there. You know, what is really disappointing and really sad is in this election, the voters do not matter. The voters do not matter. That is why there is a debt of campaign um, or issue-based campaigns. It's not about issues. It's about attack on personalities. The campaigns have been reduced to just personality clash. And it just makes a mockery of the entire concept of democracy, that elections are an opportunity for the people to assert their sovereignty. But when politicians don't engage in issues, debate, debate on issues and competitive um, ideas, what you just see is what's happening. So if both candidates uh, um, agree, you know, to, to, to resort to peace and, and refrain from um, appropriating violence as a campaign strategy, then I think it's commendable. But then, we also need to ensure that that influences political behavior. And that is the behavior of their supporters. They have to call on their supporters because it's not lip service to say, oh, yes, we pledge um, that we will not um, incite violence. But at the end of the day, we know what they do at night. Every, and we know what the politicians do at night. And that is why the voters in the state need to shine their eyes and look beyond this peace accord or this agreement to holding these political stakeholders to account. If they tell you to take arms and cause disruption, please don't, because you are destroying your own future and not theirs, because they are already sorted when it comes to either economic stability or political stability. To a large extent, they are stable. And so they are not really affected by, you know, this harsh, um, economic challenges that befall us as a people. Um, a lot of registered voters in, in Edo State have been clamoring for jobs. Um, they're clamoring for access to quality health care or even access to quality education. These are the issues that they, they are concerned about. And the election is an opportunity for them to vote a leader that would address these challenges that befalls them. But in doing so, they will not subscribe to violence. And for the talks, because we know the role that talks actually play on election day, moving from one political, one polling unit to another, trying to cause disruption in strongholds of opposition. If that happens, our security agents, they know these talks, they know where they come from. Um, I don't believe that our security agencies don't have the intelligence. We just need to ensure that the state and the, and the federal government in this case, and the state government, refrain from partisan use of our security agencies to undermine the electoral process. Let the police conduct its functions in a professional, in a transparent, and in an accountable manner. And that way, we would have an election that enjoys the, 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 the approval and the acceptance of everybody. Mm. And what would you say is the impact of this preliminary report? Well, as our, it's in, uh, in, in performance of our duty.
community as vanguards and as um as stakeholders who are providing oversight on the electoral process we have released our preliminary report with facts it's based on data it's based on observation this report has gone to the relevant stakeholders and we expect them to take action on this um we also urge the voters in in edo to be vigilant um and not allow themselves to be deceived and used by politicians we will continue to observe the process we've made recommendations and we hope those recommendations will be adopted um, in the event they are not we will continue to put pressure because our role as civil society organization is to place a demand on the state to perform its statutory responsibility and ensure that we deepen the quality of our democracy in our elections. And that is the role. And we will continue to do this until after the elections because we are going to be observing the elections. And we want to call on citizens that in performance of our responsibility, we will be very transparent, we will be very accountable, and we will be open and patriotic because if the elections go well, the entire country will be better for it. We can pride ourselves as a nation that celebrated 21 years of democracy, or just um, in next month will be 60 years, and then our elections look like we're preparing for war. No, this is not the kind of country that we desire. And it is our responsibility to keep watch over the process because the eternal price or the price that you pay for liberty is eternal vigilance. Hmm. Uh, let's touch a bit about Yag Africa as a civil society organization and an election observer. Your members have been victims of violence in the past elections. So what's the plan this time around uh, to avoid uh, being victims again? Well, we are one of the groups that ensures one, all our observers are insured um, in, in the conduct of elections. And for Edo, we'll be deploying over 600 observers. We've also engaged with the security agencies um, to ensure um, that maximum protection is provided for observers, for citizens who are coming to cast their votes. Our observers are citizens in Edo State. They are citizens who are providing oversight on the electoral process. And so we urge that our security agencies will protect um, you know, all observers. We also hope that communities would also protect their own because if observers are allowed to watch the process, it will ward off any attempt by politicians to undermine the process. So it's actually a collective responsibility that community, communities have in protecting um, election observers. But our observers are very, very trained, uh, adequately trained because we know security first. So there are also tactics that they've been trained um, to employ in the event there's any security threats um, to their life. So we hope, um, and we'll continue to hope that you know the political stakeholders will play this game by its rules. So they don't um, jeopardize the safety and security of voters, of election observers, as well as media practitioners who are involved in coverage of elections. Because both the media and civil society play similar roles. And we see how they've been um, um, subject of attacks by politicians because they want power at all costs. But we would not reneach, we will not relent, we will continue, even in the face of attacks, in the face of intimidation, to perform our role because democracy is about asking questions Democracy survives if, as, uh, as citizens rise up to provide, you know, that oversight on the process. And we will not stop because that is the patriotic zeal and the responsibility that we have as citizens of this great country called Nigeria. Thank you very much, Samson Etorio, for sharing your thoughts with us on The Breakfast. Always a delight. Thank you.